stop the show. All right, brothers, welcome to another O'Shea Vlogcast video. And today we're going to be talking about how to travel to Johannesburg, South Africa safely. Now, this is a wonderful city, one of the greatest cities in the world, one of the best cities that I've been to. But I must warn you, there is some issues that can happen. So sit back, let's relax, get into the video, get into some of the things, and we'll talk about how you can do this without the least amount of problems. Okay, let's talk flights. So I flew from Warsaw, Poland to Paris, France. Now, here's the issue that I ran into. The flight was delayed one hour because of uh, you know rain conditions. No problem. When I got to Paris to the connecting flight to Johannesburg, that flight was also delayed. But my baggage was delayed today. So I was able to catch the flight going to Johannesburg, um, coming straight off the plane from Poland. Uh, but unfortunately, my baggage didn't come the next day till the next day. So I got to Johannesburg, South Africa, and my baggage uh, was still somewhere in France. And with that being said, I learned a very, very important lesson. Um, carry a change of clothes on your carry on. Um, I typically only take my carry on as a laptop bag and I have a few pens and cell phone charges and stuff like this. But again, for my second trip in a row, I, I arrived to a whole entire new country. Uh, with absolutely no change of underwear. I had to go out and buy new stuff. So try to have a carry-on um, that you can carry, a bigger one that you have like, a you know, uh, underwear, socks, an outfit, uh, just in case for those bad circumstances because this is the second time that's happened to me. And uh, it really, really can mess up your trip. Like one day on a five-day trip um, without your luggage, it can really, really, really do a whole damage to your trip. So Make sure that you carry on extra stuff just in case uh, something like this happens to you. All right. So once you get in the airport, um, you're also able to exchange or not exchange, but to get a, a SIM card. Uh, R.O. Tambo or O.R. Tambo International Airport is pretty big. Um, and you can actually get your cell phone stuff set up there. There are a few companies you can go with. Uh, there's uh, c Cell. Uh, there is uh, MTN, which is what I used in Uganda, and MTN is actually in South Africa, also all over Africa, and Vodacom. I used Vodacom. Uh, Vodacom is a subsidiary of Vodafone, uh, and it is quite costly. You'll pay about 105 Rand to get the SIM card. Um, I also bought a USB plug-in because the charging ports are different, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But you can get almost all of that set up there. Uh, register for SIM card, select the plan, and go from there. Now, once you get set up there, you want to, if you want to use Uber, make sure that you edit and change your phone number in Uber to your South African phone number. Because your number that you use in Uber is going to let you, let's say, request an Uber. That would be no problem. But, you know, in South Africa, a lot of those drivers, uh, it's cost a lot of money for them to call long distance. So, you know, you're going to need to register your Uber with the South African SIM. So go ahead and, and do that on your Uber when you first get there. So that way, if you need to call the South African driver or he needs to call you, you can do so locally. It doesn't cost him any extra money. So make sure that you make sure you do that. Now, here's the issue that you're going to have. Once you get your luggage or you get done with whatever you're doing, there are going to be a lot of guys sweating you for rides, taxi rides, all of this shit. Never, ever do that. All right. Um, there's even cases if you go, like I said, across the street, there's like the International Hotel. There's a little restaurant there. Um, there are people, let's say even the security guards, they're all in it trying to scam you to take these rides. Uh, for example, I was sitting down having some dinner. And um, a lady asked me that I need a ride. This is a waitress. And uh, she wanted to charge me like 700 Rand for a ride to the mall. Because uh, I asked her about the closest mall. And um, But I looked on Uber. It was like 263 Rand, which is a little over $21. So what happens in these particular places, these particular waitresses are security guards. If they get rides for these cab drivers, 
um, you will get extra money. They will get extra money. So just simply politely tell them no. Now, also be careful in taking Ubers in certain parts of the city because there is a beef between South African Uber drivers and South African taxi drivers. So there's uh, a few ways to get around with far as Uber. They have a local app application called Taxify. So, you know, when you call the Uber driver, they will tell you, hey, be quick to come up here because I can't be out here too long. Um, you know, let's say in, fr in front of the Nelson Mandela Square or in front of the malls or airports because there is a violence that can happen uh, between taxi drivers and Uber or taxi five drivers. So just be very quick to get to your destination. It can get ugly real quick. So make sure that you, uh, you know, you, you, you really, really, you know, are quick. Follow the instructions. A lot of times these Uber drivers will tell you to meet them around the corner. Um, I know when I was at the... Uh, the uh, Santon uh, City Mall where the Nelson Mandela Square is at. They were telling me to meet up, meet up on West and Mall Street, which is actually around the corner from the mall, that because it was so dangerous uh, to get picked up right in front of where the tax drivers are. So make sure that you do that. So let's talk where to stay in Johannesburg. I was lucky enough to stay at the Santon Sky Inn. Um, shout out to Rakesh. This is the guy that I stayed at his uh, apartment complex and basically what the Santon Sky is is a luxury apartment complex in Santon which is the most exclusive part of Johannesburg South Africa um, it is absolutely wonderful you'll meet who is who in South Africa here uh, you know for sure you'll, you'll, you'll be staying with guys who are uh, you know professional soccer players I ran into Tashina Arnold, who used to be Pam on Martin. She was there. They have a wonderful restaurant called The Cod Father. Um, they also have uh, a spa inside. So you can actually buy one of these uh, penthouses, too, uh, if you want to as well. Or you can rent them by nightly, um, either through the place directly or through uh, Airbnb. Uh, the beautiful thing about staying in Santon, it's a, uh, it's particularly safe. Now I do have a story where I came across some piece police corruption, but it's right there by the Santon city mall. And, uh, you know, it is a great place to stay at, man. I would definitely recommend you brothers stay in there. Um, I looked on Airbnb. I've seen some places as low as 55 bucks a night. I paid about a hundred bucks a night. Uh, while staying there with all the fees and taxes and stuff. So, you know, you brothers definitely, definitely you want to stay here um, for your first time coming. No doubt about it. It's just convenient. Um, it's a lot of, a lot of great energy there. Beautiful restaurant. Great service. I mean, it's, it's right there close to a lot of things. It's very safe. You know, you have a definite good time uh, at the Santa and Sky Inn. So, um, you know, check out a few of the photos. Let me know if you like it, but you'll definitely, definitely love it. All right, so let's talk about um, police corruption in South Africa. All right, um, shout out to uh, you know Nelson Mandela Square and the Santon City Mall it was actually great. A lot of great restaurants. Had a great time at the Heart Rock Cafe. Um, but I was coming back in a taxi fi uh, car, which is their version of Uber. And we're coming out and, and, you know, I was staying in Santon and that's where this mall is at. The place where I lived had to be no more than two minutes driving. Um, these police officers pulled the car over um, and there was no reason for them to pull the car over. They just pulled the car over for a reason. Um, and so, you know, they asked me to get out the car. Um, I did have some South African cash on me. They felt it. Uh, and they asked for my passport. I didn't have it on me. I told them that, you know, the passport was um, in the hotel. Uh, there was a driver and there was a discussion between the driver and there was uh, some arguments going on. And so the, the, the police were threatened to take me to jail um, and hold me because I didn't have my passport on me. Um, at this point, I had to try to like, you know, um, negotiate my way out of it. It cost me like 1110 Rand to do that which is a little over $90. Obviously, that's too much to pay um, to get out of the situation. But after that, they told me that if I don't have my passport on me, um, to take a copy of your passport, um, print it out, laminate it, and then keep it with you so that you can identify yourself. So I will tell you guys this. 
Make sure that if you don't have your passport on you, and I can understand you don't want to lose your passport because you're stuck in the country, uh, take a copy of your passport, uh, color, uh, laminate it, or you know, make copies of it, and then print it out. And uh, in, in case you get stopped by the police, you want to be able to identify yourself because these guys will shake you down. Uh, they will threaten to take you to jail. Even if they can't do it, they will ask you for money. And uh, the guy had enough nerve to um, even call me the next day. He was like, yeah, man, I want to hang out with you and shit. Like, after the nigga robbed me. So, you know, just be be aware of that. Also, uh, you know, be aware in, in South Africa, you know, certain places that you go. There are other places like Santon that's nice. But, um, you know, there are, and I did go to Mabonang. Shout out to Mabonang. I had a really good time at the Pata Pata restaurant where I had some dinner. Um, but you know, there are places that even the Uber won't take you cause it's, it's so dangerous. Um, so be mindful of that. Be mindful of the women that you meet up with. Be mindful of who you let come into your place. Uh, you know, it, it is, you know, it's a nice place, man, but it is, uh, it can be quite dangerous, uh, in certain parts of the city. So, you know, if you're a middle-class guy, uh, you know, you like being around that co company, uh, where it's, you know, rather safe. Um, stay in Santon, you know, stay around the rock, you know, the surrounding areas. If you wanted to go on a tour to Soweto, you want to go to Mabonang, you want to go to the apartheid museum, all that's cool. Uh, but again, make sure you stay, uh, you know, in, 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 in areas that are safe, uh, because you could get taken advantage of it, You know, rem remember, you know, just because you're black doesn't mean that other people don't see you as opportunity, right? Because when you start talking and you start speaking, they're going to know that you are not from there. All right. So all skin folks ain't kin folks, brothers. So just make sure you know that African uh, power plug adapter is much different um, than anything I've ever seen. It's different from the United States one. It's a three prong outlet thing. Um, so as you see right there. Now, if you do have your typical, you know, European uh, two prong outlet, that will also work. But um, if you want to get started before you get to South Africa, you know, check out this. Uh, you can go to Amazon.com and, and get your power adapter uh, kind of ready there. And so that you're able to plug in when you get there. Because obviously, um, when you're on the flight, let's say you're coming from the United States, that's going to be a long flight. What I probably recommend is, you know, take two power packs, you know, charge them up before you get on your flight, two or three because you're probably going to be laid over somewhere, maybe like in Amsterdam. Um, Amsterdam also is an awesome airport. You can buy internet there for like 10 euros uh, for the entire 24 hour period. Um, so the layover was there. It was pretty good. Most times coming from the United States to Africa, you'll lay over somewhere in Europe. So, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, you, you, you keep your power plaques plugged in and everything of this nature um, and that you are able to plug in once you get there. So, you know, another thing, too, let me talk a little bit about the chicks, the women there. Um, it is booty city. It's a lot of ass um, in comparison to like Uganda. I would have to say that it's like very, 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 very close because um, Kampala is like, oh, my God. Um, but this place is, is pretty good, too. I think that Johannesburg has the edge when it comes to. You know, women looking a little bit more fashionable, not looking so poor. This is a, you know, world-class city. So there's a lot more stores. There's a lot more makeup. There's a lot more money. So the women are able to take care of themselves, you know, almost to the same as Western standards, you know. So you'll see the same, you know, type of makeups and things like that and, and nice dresses and nice stuff that you'll see in the Western world. Whereas in Uganda, you won't see that. But as far as the shape, as far as ass, you're going to see a lot of that, um, I did interact with some of the ladies that worked at certain places. They were very friendly, very nice, uh, very receptive. So, yeah, I can see why there are a lot of Nigerian guys out there trying to holler at chicks. There's a lot of dudes out there, a lot of women out there that are just absolutely stunning, just booty just everywhere. So, brothers, you got to check it out. So, anyways, I hope you guys um, have been helped in this particular uh, breakdown. Uh, you know, stay safe. Uh, thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for supporting the shows. Uh, you know, I had a chance to go to two countries in the last 30 days, which was Brazil and South Africa. So I won't be doing so much traveling until like maybe in September. So I just hope you got a kick out of this one, brothers, and see you on the other side. Peace.